on Facebook. I hope this is working. Yes, now it's clear. <clears throat> I think we should be live now. So um, I pass the word to Jean-Claude Wilkins for the official welcome. We have around 70 attendees now. So I think there are some people who will pop in in the coming minutes. So hello, everybody. Welcome for this morning webinar. This, I think this is the first morning webinar since we have been confined up. Usually it's afternoon and evening. but. And we have with us Jim Daus, who is our guest for this webinar. I'm so happy to be able to present this uh, session because I discovered Jim some, some years ago, but I, I, I was so happy to be his guest in his school in Denmark, in, in the Arvis Academy of Music, where he has started some years ago this complete curriculum on e-learning and of course rhythmical music and VOPA and all these techniques that he will present to you and tell you how to to develop uh, uh, through the screen. So that was a, a real discovery for an old one like me that say okay there is other way there are other ways and Jim is the right person to present this. So thank you for coming in, Jim, and for accepting this invitation. And uh, just before you start, I think Sonia will do some uh, technical uh, announcement about question answers, and we will get back together at the end of your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Claude. So welcome from my side again as well. And um, as you have probably already realized, just to let you know that we are recording this webinar and we are live streaming it on Facebook, but um, the people who are watching the recording cannot see the names of the participants. So you can remain anonymous, don't worry about that. Um, and then just a few very basic rules about um, how this webinar works in, in case you have never done a Zoom webinar before. So um, today we will have one guest speaker, um, Jim Daus, and he will tell you a lot of um, interesting and fascinating things. Um, his presentation will last around 50 minutes and um, we will not interrupt his presentation with questions, but he will answer them in a block afterwards. However, you can already ask questions, but we would like to ask you for a favor. Please do not use the chat, but you should have a function that is called Q&A where you can ask your questions because then Jean-Claude and I will be monitoring this a little bit. And if a question appears twice, we might delete the second version so that we have a more clear situation. And it's easier for us than looking for questions within the chat where there will be a lot of greetings and hellos and other things as well. And as I already wrote in the chat, please be aware of the fact that if you write only to all panelists, which is the pre-installed option, then only the four of us that are visible here can read it and the other attendees cannot. So if you want to reach everybody, make sure to choose all panelists and attendees. And then just if you find it difficult to um, follow the webinar because your connection is not so strong, just try closing some other programs that may be open on your computer that usually increases the experience. And with this, I will pass the word to Jim and I wish you all a nice webinar. Thank you very much and good morning, everyone. Thanks for the invitation, ECA. I've been looking so much forward to this um, and uh, will do my best to guide you through the topics here today. And um, I have, of course, something that will be shared on my screen as well. Um, so first of all, I'll say that I'm a big fan of the internet because the internet makes it possible that we can meet and share our knowledge the way that we meet today. And um, I use it a lot, um, also a lot before the COVID-19 issue. And uh, I think that after this crisis, we will find some kind of a hybrid to still work and meet online. So um, today, 
this is about, I have a map here. Um, just a second. This one, yes. This is the map which I will uh, guide you through. There will be an uh, introduction about the Intelligent Choir. And then we go to the Intelligent Choir content, what's in it. Then we are going to uh, a practical mode to, uh, to practice together. And something about how to move on with uh, education and so on. The reason that I'm sharing this way that you can see my, 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 my stuff here is that the videos will run more smooth than if I go on full screen mode, just for your information. So the introduction, I've been teaching at uh, the Royal Academy of Music for more than 20 years. And um, I started when I was 29 and uh, wanted to find a way for pop and jazz choir music. And um, I wasn't trained specifically myself, so it was learning by doing. And after some years, it turned into be Rame Vocal Center with my wonderful colleagues here. Uh, myself in a younger version, Peter Carlson, Melene Richtop and Jesper Holm. And we've been together for quite some years and here's like more the picture of how we look today. Uh, you see a bit older, a bit older, but I think Jesper and Melina actually look a bit younger. So um, I don't know. In our daily life, we meet every month with a lot of students that come from abroad to get to know more about and trained into pop and jazz core and music. So this is a typical uh, setting where we are improvising together, we are jamming, we're singing, and we are learning from each other. Why I'm mentioning this is that it's, I think it's a lab. So I've been trying out for more than 20 years, the different things that I believe in that makes a difference in, you could say, modern leadership for choral conducting. So every month I have a chance, we have a chance to collaborate and try out the latest news. Um, I will show you now a two minutes of a longer uh, documentary that you can look up yourself on my YouTube channel afterwards. But I think it could be like a little bit of a video introduction to um, what I'm going to talk about today. So here comes two minutes from the documentary. See, rhythm comes first. Kuchesa, det er Swahili. Det er et ord, der dækker I am music, kunne man sige. Det dækker, at man har sin musikalske krop i spil. At man synger sammen med sin krop. Og når man først har fat i det, så eksploderer det i koret. En lille bitte går man jo la 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 la. De synger sådan hvad som helst, og der er tradition for at man øh, samerne de jøger, de jøger det de ser. Så den er spontane udfoldelse, den er fantastisk frigørende for øh, for sjælen. Børnene kan gøre det, men vi glemmer det når vi bliver teenager. Og, og som voksen, så bliver det mere og mere, øh, ja. Når man 
selv er skabende, du selv kommer ind bag kulissen. Og jo mere man gør det, jo mere bliver korene, korsangerne indstillet på. Selvfølgelig kan vi finde på selv. Paradoxet med at improvisere. So um, I want you to try to say this word kuchesa. Just say it out loud. Kuchesa. I really like the word kuchesa. So Swahili for what I see as I am music. So what I'm focusing on here is that the intelligent choir is some kind of a pedagogical practical philosophy for having everyone feel I am music. So Kuchesa, Swahili for something like that. Okay. Let's dig into the content of the intelligent choir or the methods related to it. So TIC is the intelligent choir. And I'm going to talk about three focus areas that are present all the time. And then more about the results before we go into some practicing. So here in front of you, you see that one area is developing our musical skills. Another area is to implementing vocal painting, which is a nonverbal communication sign language between all the singers and the conductor, and expand our comfort zone. So let's look into the first area. The pedagogical focus points for music is already the first hand sign for vocal painting. So if you all take your right hand, not the left one, but the right hand, you see we have five fingers that also is a symbol for these pedagogical focus points. Rhythm and groove, intonation and pitch, sound and blend, expression and interpretation, and performance and concert design. So to have Kuchesa, we need musical reflection. So instead of music is music, well, music is music, but when you have this map in front of you, you can go into this, these different areas and practice and evaluate where are we, what can we do to improve our skills from here. So, um, Rhythm and groove I have like with a green marking because to me, as I told you in the video, rhythm comes first. It's not something that you add on later that, well, you can, the Cochesa is not something you just put on top of the music when you have learned the scores and then get into the swing and groove. So when rhythm comes first, I mean the Cochesa input for rhythm takes some practice. So I want to show you some ways to work on rhythm and groove and then Cochesa so that everyone feels I am really music when rhythm comes first. So there will be a little bit about icebreakers, basic steps, coordination, rhythm signs, and then Kuchesa. We'll have a little glimpse of every video and then you can uh, watch it uh, later. So here first, an icebreaker and uh, feel free to use it, of course, if you would like to try it out in real life. One, two, and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, Three with a one, clap two, and three, go. Two, three, 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 The 
reason to have icebreakers to me is that to feel, to get out of the anonymous comfort zone in a choir and celebrate every time you feel that you are under pressure and maybe make mistakes. Every time you make a mistake in a choir, celebrate it by shouting, yes! So for example, if this icebreaker doesn't work in the beginning and you, you know, laugh and scream, yeah! We did our best. So icebreakers, I like a lot. Then basic steps, you could say, what comes before a basic step? A basic step you could consider as being like dancing. So you can't, sometimes you think that you are doing the right basic step, but then you are just walking and not, you know, feel free about it. So before basic steps comes basic step zero, when you loosen up and feel Kuchesa in your own body that you are music. It's not a choreography, it's something that you really feel for. But here you can see a couple of, of, uh, of the steps that, uh, that we use in the choir to you know, organize movements to feel the challenge and celebrate. Here it comes. One, two, and a three, and four, and a two. Step two. Basic step three. So with basic steps, you can you can add a basic step when you sing, for example, if you want to guide the singers for reflection into how does it feel with this music if we go on, move on to a halftime feeling. Then you don't have to, you know, teach it. You can just sign that you will now walk basic step three, for example, because that would be halftime. And the singers feel comfortable about it because they know the business. Yes. So... On our way to the Cochesa coordination, where we do several things at a time, I also strongly recommend. So in this case, you could uh, stand up wherever you are and try out this uh, progression for a couple of minutes. So now it's time to, to interact with the video. This is good for me, it's called, because it's really good for everyone. Three layers at the same time, let's try it out. So, find a nice clap, not too, okay. and a pulse. <clears throat> this is good for me, this is so good for me, this is good for me, this is so good for me. This is good for me. This is so good for me. This is good for me. This is so good for me. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four. 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 Relax, and I go an areas. Yeah, almost. Wait. 
with a back bead. And we can save the back bead for later. Um, yes, one of my favorites, as I told you, because it's lots of fun. And over time, you really develop that your physical body is like a, uh, an instrument that, that is so supportive when it comes to rhythm and singing. So also um, rhythm signs for reflection where subdivisions can be, can be uh, you could say, um, improvised that the singers here actually know from vocal painting, which I will talk about later on, they can guide each other through quarter note, eight note and 16th note and also triplets. So when they are in small groups, they can actually conduct each other for micro improvisation. And that's really good for musical reflection and the Cochesa factor that they get out of this anonymous zone. Let, let's have a little look at it. Two and three and four. D. D, D, da, D, da, D, 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 And to me, it's important that when you are working with a choir for more cochesa and musical reflection, everyone needs to have a turn. So it's not only the ones that sign up, but you know, small groups when you know that you will have a turn and people will feel more and more activated. Okay, so um, next comes like, it's not there yet, but cochesa will come where you also standing in bigger circles and sent around in a circle like I'm showing you now what they know so far, for example, rhythm, solfege and other things. And then they learn it and pass it on to a neighbor singer. Let's have a look. Do So you could say, why are doing all this? It's because that when we are singing our regular repertoire, the singers know much more about the musicianship in choral singing. And they know that they can actually contribute with their own musicality, just like in a big band, for example. 
So I really love the interaction and that's why I'm doing all this. So this is, uh, this is to, to get closer to, to Cochesa. And not to forget all the other important parameters for the chorister's musical skills development. Well, rhythm, you could say, is important for pop and jazz music. But of course, intonation and pitch, sound and blend, expression, and interpretation, and the performance are as important. Um, and you could say that the first two, A and B, is a note. So it's a note that says the time and the tone height. And then you add sound expression to it. So when you have under when you understand that, you are more involved in the music. So that's why I also want to show you intonation and pitch, the sulfur thing that also in small groups, I recommend stick to the pentatonic scale and teach them do re mi so la la so mi re do and take a turn and then one after another they guide their fellow singers to uh, make micro improvisation with music. Let's have a short look. Do. Do. seen that anybody actually children adults very adults are uh, going into this they can they can actually make it happen if you think it's too tricky with five pitch then you can decide and go for three so one half of the section will take care of do re mi and the other half mi so la and then together we have all five pitch anyway so that was about the first area developing the chorister's musical skills with a focus on rhythm here. Um, vocal painting, you have seen already vocal painting and why vocal painting? Vocal painting is standing on the shoulders of sound painting. So I've been talking to Walter Thompson, the creator of the original sound painting language about the possibility for having a dialect 
So it's not a new language. It's it's just a dialect where we um, where we conduct the way that we normally conduct. So it's like a small box in front of us where we can conduct and show everything. And then also using selected and also new uh, signs that are not in the original uh, sound painting language. So for example, solfege and the diggy dagge and basic steps and air for voice and a lot of signs are not there in sound painting, but that's why there is a version called vocal painting. So of course, this is for choristers. And uh, by now there are 75 gestures, but another 25 under construction. So I, I will not go for more than 100. And 100 is a lot of signs. And I think most vocal painting conductors are using 10. So in real life, you will select the ones that fit you and the choir. Uh, but to see the potential before we get into practice mode, because I want to teach you some concrete vocal painting gestures, I think we should have a, a short look. This video is about two minutes where vocal painting in a more artistic setting is involved at Aarhus Vocal Festival uh, last year, where I had 20 singers in front of me and some great soloists from abroad. And we, and we didn't have a plan, except from that we were, we were performing 12 minutes in a bigger show where our task was to sing Armageddon. So how do you make Armageddon? So no sheets, just vocal painting for live composing and improvisation. So here's a little glimpse. And if you want to see the whole show, you can, you can find it on my YouTube channel. Let's have a little look where, where yeah, vocal painting. Uh, I think I should maybe just show you what's going on. I'll, I'll do this a couple of times. It means that I take two half notes down or two half notes up could also be one half. So for example, ooh, 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 ooh. So when the whole choir is on a drone, with vocal painting, you can, you can um, transpose it and add rhythm and some breaks and stuff like that. Let's have a, let's have a look. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Yeah. And I can tell you, it was like a sweaty business to conduct Armageddon. Uh, and it got, got worse and worse until the final countdown. Okay. But um, yeah, it doesn't have to be this extreme, of course, with vocal painting. Okay. The last element before we move on to um, rehearsing with you guys is expanding our comfort zone. Because <clears throat> to I, I never leave it out when I coach and teach a choir of students that, 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 that improvisational works, liberation of voice, and the tactile experience with music. For example, when you do solfege, when you do diggy daggy, when you do the steps, you move and groove, and you really, you know, feel the music, you feel Cochesa, then we are expanding our comfort zone. So do it by base, uh, baby steps. Two big steps will, will be a disaster. They will say, this was not what I signed up for, this choir. I don't want to do that. So you have to, you know, believe that musical reflection takes some education in choir, and then with icebreakers, for example, just touch that we actually all are musicians. So um, here's a short example of the solfege used with audience. So the audience were not expected, but they actually just sing with me because I wanted to make music with them. So. Uh, you could say, now, maybe I expand their comfort zone a little bit. Let's see. And after after that uh, little clip, uh, my colleague Lena Nergor is uh, showing you pure Cochesa. <laughs> like a, a jam session from from that spirit i like it a lot and it was jesper felk on percussion yes okay let's move on now i think you know more about what the intelligent choir is about the result you would say i would say uh, for for this for these methods is that you will get kuchesa in the choir, you will get a tactile, you will give a tactile experience with music in the choir. Reflection, creativity, interaction, co-responsibility, and rhythm and groove improvement. And since this is an alternative, no, not an alternative, it, 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 it kind of corresponds to just, you know, sight reading, that you also on the side learn about music from a different angle, through different channels. That would be a kinesthetic learning experience that also counts a lot for Cochesa. 
Yes. Okay, now we have been through the introduction and the content of the intelligent choir. So learn it. Groove is the engine for rhythm. So with tempo, subdivisions and accents all together, you can have the DNA of a groove and then have audible subdivisions, ghost notes. And why I'm telling you that is because there will be a gesture that can work with ghost notes. So ghost notes are improvised fields around the rhythm music. So they're often not present when you look at it. So your inner code chaser must know how to perform it. So we need to, to find tools to do that. So Volpa is a shortcut for vocal painting. The five basic vocal painting signs for all choristers are, in my book, these five. So now you can actually take your right hand and the right hand, not the left one, is because that later on when we do sight reading stuff, you see that when you look at me, it goes from left to right. So. A lot of these signs have something about with time and, you know, like with sight reading. So that's why I use right hand as a power hand. So it means not only the five pedagogical areas, but also sing. So reset and sing the music. Go. The opposite is energizing. Sing without pitch. So we can sing and we can sing without pitch. And um, long notes, please do that with me. Long notes and short notes. And what I talked about, the audible subdivisions. So if you say sing and then add the audible subdivisions, it will be added to it. If you energize, you can also activate the uh, filter for ghost notes. So I like a lot to work on this music as an exercise. I'm a big, big fan of Bob McFerrin and his like pure Cochesa and circle singing. So circle song seven, you can find anywhere. And um, it doesn't mean anything. Um, I will stop sharing so that you can see me on a bigger screen now and then continue later on. So first I want you to learn the lyric. It's a, it mean it says sinene. Come on. Sinene. Sinene sine e your turn. Sinene sine e and e um in the end. E um. So with rhythm it says sinene sine e um again. Sinene sine e um, one more time. Sinene, sinet, e. Um, and sinene, sinet, e. Um, right. And the tail. E, e, um. Your turn. E, e, um. And the music goes in seven, so just follow me. Sinene, sinet, e. Um, e, e, um. Sinene, sinet, e. Um, e, e. Um again, sine ne sine e um e e um sine ne sine e um e e um. All right, with music with notes, it goes like this: si sine ne sine e um e e um sine ne sine e um e e um okay so now i will introduce you to long notes short notes and the filter that works in both modes you just follow me and i will sing it and do it along the way so like this sine ne sine e um e e um sine ne sine e um na na e e e e um na na a sine ne sine e e um na na e e e e um na na a sine ne sine e um e e 
um, sine ne, sine e, um, e, e, um, sine ne, sine e, um, nana, e, 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 um, nana, a sine ne, a sine e, e, um, nana, e, 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 um, nana, a sine ne, a sine e, e, um, e, 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 um, a sine ne, a sine e, e, um, nana, keep it, e, 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 um, nana. A sine ne sine e um e e e e um a sine ne sine e um e e um sine ne sine e um e e um. So the last one is like sustain the note. So power hand and hammer says sustain the note. And then you can take something off or start it again. So if this music was not Sinane, but any of your songs, you can start to work on the energy of the music by sing it and then energize it. Stretch it with long notes, take it down to short notes to feel more of the rhythm. And from my experience, when you are on short notes and activate the filter for subdivisions, every singer will start to move and groove a bit more because it's it, it kind of invite you to do it yeah so in um, back to share screen so here you can you can find the music and so the Vopa the first Vopa 5 I uh, you know now I will also recommend in the beginning to use this fermata I talked about and also transpose half step up, two half steps or the other way, one half step down or two half steps. When you're happy with something, you use your left hand to save it. Then you save the new tonality or the amount of ghost notes or, or what you are doing. The last thing is a looper. So when you do like this, you start to loop. And here you can see it's important to do it that direction. So when you look at the conductor, it's like from left to right and not that direction. So I mirror myself. Okay. So let me show you a version of Sinene where I use Vopa 5 and also Fermata Transpose and the Looper. Hmm. Sinene, Sine, E, Um, E, E. Um, sine ne sine e um e. Sine ne sine e um e e um. Sine ne sine e e um na na e e e e um na. Sine ne sine e um e e e e um. Sine ne sine e um e e. Sine ne sine e um e e um sine ne sine e um sine ne sine e um sine ne sine e um e e um sine ne sine e um come on sine ne sine e um, everybody, sine ne sine, sine ne sine, sine ne sine ne, sine ne sine ne, sine ne sine ne sine. Ah, sine ne sine e um e e um, sine ne sine e um na na e e e e um na 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 dum dum ke um an an ke. Okay, that was um, something about live arranging. Because live arranging to me comes first. Pick a song that fits to the goal that you actually want to ask for musical reflection because you conduct a variation of the music and the singers will follow you. So they will feel more musicianship, you could say, rather than only sing what's written already. So they never know what's going to happen around the next corner. 
So in front of live arranging, we have live composing. So you could say a balance. When is it about time to alter live compose? Live compose would be different and more, more like the sound painting is made for, like, like music in the moment where everyone's like create something, you know, for example, these five gestures here are create. So you could create something. And what comes after the create sign will give you a direction, for example, create melody line or create bass or create a, a harmonization, an upper voice or whatever. Also synchronize. So for example, if one singer is creating a melody line and it's always in a loop, it means that now you can ask other singers to synchronize with this person. You can also ask, you know, please harmonize that voice. You can also freestyle. It means you can improvise and it's not a loop anymore. Because when you create, it's always a loop. When you show improvise, it's freestyle. So freestyle means do what you think fits into the moment, but it's not a loop. Or you can have the solo. So next time I will be singing with you, Jean-Claude, I will give you the solo for sure. Yes. Um, so there will be five, seven, eight, maximum 10 minutes more. And then we will be have Q and A's uh, for what I've been going through today. So I want to show you something that is not just me, that in a pedagogical setup where you are working with creativity in the choir to actually hand out that the singers could figure out some loops. Then this is called framework. What you will see where I say create clap. So the people start, the singer starts to, to, to create a clap loop and all the singers will join. And then more and more, uh, you could say uh, singing will be implemented because we go from energizing to singing. So um, let's have a look. Yes, so 
Um, using concrete methods to expand everyone's comfort zone with baby steps over time, then in the end you will, in my opinion, have a more reflected choir, which is a whole, you would say, pedagogical philosophy that co-creativity is great. You have a stronger choir and more reflected singers when you sing your repertoire. Yes, so uh, not much left. Um, education, of course. Um, the Rama Vocal Center website is uh, in front of you here, ramavocalcenter.dk. If you would like to check out the app, then you can download it from my website, theintelligentchoir.com. And um, there are at the moment 75 gestures with video tutorials so that you can be guided through how they work. And also within the next half year, <clears throat> there will be a module that you can add on where some of the videos you have seen today and a lot more for pedagogical um, angle for conductors will be uh, available as well. Um, so the Royal Academy of Music is situated in Denmark and um, the official website is this and I told you about the Rama Vocal Center where we have depending between 30 and 50 students per, per year where me and my colleagues are teaching every time we are there all boot camps and the boot camps takes place every month you can also join us as a visiting singer so if you think it could be cool to stop by and sing with us you can sign up as a visiting singer after the corona time if we can't meet still for some time we also open up our zoom channel so that you can sign up as an online participant don't hesitate to contact me on email if you have any questions or uh, anything else before the questions this online course is something where you can sign up and join us as a online student for the whole autumn semester from wherever you are situated from around the world and we will guide you through a lot of classes me and my colleagues so with this two minute video i will end uh, the presentation and then we will go into the q a thank you hello everyone my name is jim and i'm from rama vocal center in denmark we just wanted to let you know that we are going to facilitate an online inspiration course during the autumn of 2020 and you are very welcome to participate. Singer's Tools is about potential that you can find inside of every singer in the world. In my classes in the inspiration course I will provide you with musical processes that will unlock the potential of the singers of your group. I'm looking forward to seeing you in our program. Until then, have fun. Good luck. Hi, I'm Melina Rektrup. I will be teaching vocal arranging and composing and interpretation tools on the inspiration course and hopefully inspire you to write your own vocal music. Hi, should pop and jazz class be conducted? If so, then when and how? It's the consistency between what you want and what you show. But we will talk about that and also about rehearsal technique, prep work, workflows that can help you when you are teaching a new score to your singers. I'm going to teach the Intelligent Choir and vocal painting. The Intelligent Choir is a philosophy about co-creativity in the choir and vocal painting is an extended toolbox for call conducting where you can make improvisation, live composing, live arranging and lots of fun stuff. It's all about Cochesa and Cochesa means I am music. Hope to see you. Bye bye. Yes, <laughs> Cochesa. Thank you everyone. I hope it, it made sense. So um, please, Jean-Claude, Sonia, guide me from here. Thank you very much, Jim. That was really interesting. We have a couple of questions. 
and uh, out of which I'd like to answer myself to Corinne Arnaud, who asked if we have workshops in France. So we have planned with Accurjoin International, so that the Belgian, the Swiss, and the French, to invite you for a first weekend of teaching in Brussels in November this year. That would be followed with another some days teaching in France next summer, and in between some possible uh, e-learning things. So go on Accurjoin website, and uh, you will find more information about that for France. Then uh, we have a couple of questions on icebreakers and VOPA and the use of VOPA. Some ask, can I use VOPA with my classic chamber choir? Or uh, is it for everybody, for any conductor? I can, I can tell you for sure that I hope this could inspire anyone to give it a go. So I'm not a fan of a specific genre myself. Uh, of course, I've checked it out in the beginning with pop and jazz choirs. And you could say that they, a, a, a part of their normal life would be improvisation, more or less, and the movement and so on. But I, why not? I mean, when you, when, you, when you see Bob McFerrin in a lot of, you know, various settings. When you believe in what you do and then do it with people, they just join you if it's music. So um, don't make too big steps when you try something. And maybe, um, you know, pick any song that like a canon or something that you think they it, this actually works already. This is kind of nice music and it's not all it's not music where you don't want to manipulate so you, you must be like ready to manipulate a little bit with the music if you live arrange with vopa but before vopa comes Cochesa, in my opinion so any choir any choir could benefit from solfege in small groups where they conduct the pentatonic scale and maybe some diggy dug you don't have to do the basic steps. Basic step can be where people say, mm, this is not what I signed up for. So, but the trick is that if you sing a song, if you like, for example, the Sinanae or any song with a pulse, and then you start to turn up for, for ghost notes, singers start to activate their Cochesa body by themselves. So the trick is to really go slow and spend a lot of, of time on this development, but you must believe in it yourself that there's a reason to do it. So yes, and children are so fast. When we have tried it with children, um, and you say, okay, let's sing, let's sing this song that we know, la la do re mi 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 re do la la. They know the song, they like to sing it, and then you ask them, okay, who would like to conduct? You can do long notes or and short notes then you will see all the children yes pick me i want to conduct so so because it's so much fun to to make these variations and then you can decide that there are two options for vocal painting for example so i hope that everyone will give it a try yes uh are you reading with me or not? Uh, I think on Icebreaker we have given the website. Uh, how would you introduce VOPA for an audition before a choir? Before? You mean in front or before? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the link to sign up for the online course just mentioned? I mean, this is probably your uh, Rama Center. Yeah, I will put that in um, the chat as well, because this in the chat comes the direct link. If you just go there, you scroll down on the same page that you see and click on inspiration course. And under inspiration course, you see the different possibilities, also the online version. Okay, and about Brussels, I have put the dates, and I see that Fabien have put the link to Akirjoa. 
to see the activity. I don't know how far we are with the registration because of the COVID thing, but very soon it will be available for sure. Uh -huh. Children, you addressed that. Yeah. Ah, can I undergraduate student join your online course? Somebody ask. If let me get that again. If uh, if you can you repeat the question, Jean Claude, please. Can I? I will put it in the right order. Can I join your online course? Your undergraduate studying studying online course. Anyone can, yes, we have, but uh, there are only, it's, it's like exclusive. We want to have between six and 12 only because we want to teach. So if you join the online inspiration course, you'll be activated as like a student in September, October and November for me and my colleagues to give you concrete tools to move on from here. That could be like a warm up for joining more classes and maybe sometime later, go to the school and invest some time into learning about Cochesa. The thing is that it's not something, you can't read a book about it for two reasons. There's not a book <laughs> to, when you read the book, it's like you have to be it yourself. You have to learn it by doing it. So that's one of the things that, um, that, that I learn every time on bootcamp, that we are so many the students call it a vocal family, and I really think it's a vocal family. So it's like we have a big vocal family with um, potential for, of course, going to our school, but also Kodas in Netherlands and Sibelius Academy in Finland that are like spreading the word about the intelligent choir and vocal painting, plus a lot of other things. So you can, you can find schools more and more. Also, I think that Germany will will make something uh, in Cologne. And um, so it's like, go back to school and, uh, and, and learn it. And so that you can see this actually is, you cannot just add swing and rhythm on top of when you have, when you know the score, and then let's also make it swing. Uh, to me, it's the opposite. When you have the natural the natural fundament you can build the house. Of course, it's a big shortcut if you can sight read. And of course, you should take care, a lot of care on the sound, vowels, dynamics, text, everything counts equally. But you could say the Cochesa factor needs you to practice yourself to really be music if rhythm and groove is important. We have an interesting question coming from Southeast Asia, Java. And somebody asked, can we replace the pentatonic uh, Western scale by our scale to be easier to touch with our local culture? I think it's yes, no? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think so. For, for, first of all, you can you can use this sign for uh, for half step. So do, 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 do. Do 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 do. So back it was something with uh, mixolydian and and uh, lydian at the same time. So this this is based on cod codally the solfege system. And in some countries like France, right, Jean Claude, Italy, the do re mi means C D E. So you can't transpose it. Do is fixed C. So it wouldn't be a good idea to start to do, 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 re, mi, fa, so. But actually in my language, the do is movable. So you can have a bit of a discussion sometimes if you want to go this way or another way. So to me, I, I just signed the hand signs to be in the scale. So you can do, 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 do. So you can actually, you can actually do a lot of, of reflection work. Yeah, this problem of the movable do, yeah. and that it is a fixed note for us, French speaking, Latin, yeah. more Latin. We had already with the solemnization and could I method some 
yeah. before I was born. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. an ongoing discussion. Uh, somebody ask again, can this method apply to someone who have no musical experience? Can we teach Vopa method to them? I think yeah. it's yes, no? It is, it is a big yes, because remember this, that you could say it's a little bit of a provocation, right, to call it the intelligent choir, because what is the opposite? <laughs> Do you have a not intelligent choir? No, you don't have. You, you could say that you can unlock the potential, like Peter Carlson talks about, you can unlock the potential that we all have. So this is for everyone. Everybody. 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 It's... I have an another interesting question. Is, is the intelligent choir method based on theoretical principle from other disciplines like psychology, pedagogy, anthropology? I... Question from Alberto. Yeah, it's a good question. The thing is that I, I've been a professor since 2006. Time is running. My research has been like, I do something and then I look back and get my critical reflection from colleagues and students and then I consolidate and move on. So actually it's a very relevant question because I believe that within the next couple of years it will have a better definition on where is this actually where does it actually come from? What's out there already from many different aspects? So you could say, I've been collecting ideas and put it into a concept with a concrete methodology where you can activate yourself and your singers over time. It takes around two years to master it completely. The, the, the methods related to the concept. But um, I I hope to be able to answer it more concrete within some years because I need to put my, you know, address my research in that direction too. But of course, uh, Kodai, Doug Cross, Harvard Gardner's, the intel uh, intelligent categories and uh, a lot of ear training theory, uh, background knowledge and uh, improvisation by Bob McFerrin, Rihanna and the Vocal River book and a lot of, lot of things that are in this, yes. I have another technical question. This is the last one on the list. No, not the last one. Uh, is it to be improvised, the VOPA, or can the choir leader have a song pre-prepared with some vocal painting and thinking about contemporary music? Yeah, good question. So I, in my presentation, I kind of define it roughly into um, live arranging and live composing. But in between, I actually think there is something. So we call it palettes. So you can prepare a palette that is a, a loop song. So the loop song is well prepared. You know it totally uh, and can teach it by ear and then you could say it's almost the same as a circle song a circle song is where it's supposed to happen in the moment based on inspiration from the audience and the singers and so on okay but that can be too risky in front of a choir when you are developing the Cochesa factor right so i would definitely bring loop songs that are well prepared and are small arrangements of a few bars that you can like Sinane or even more bars of music, maybe with part A and part B, so you also have a harmonic variation. Teach it to the singers, they are already happy because they know that business, learn a song by ear. But then you implement the first vocal painting, five gestures. So you don't need to do anything that sing, energize, maybe long notes, maybe short notes, and maybe the filter for ghost notes on that. Maybe sustain on a note, transpose, save the tonality and sing it in the new tonality. You will have lots of fun. Keep it super simple. That's the trick. And then improvise will come later. When you develop your own skills as an improviser and your coachesa, like I'm, a mus I'm music when it comes to improvised music. When that's developed and you, and you feel totally relaxed, you, you could make a hybrid of maybe one bass line and one melody line that are prepared. And then you can, you can come up with a new bass line or harmonize it, or you can use vocal painting to say, 
we have the melody line, could you please create the bass to another singer? And then, so, so there's a lot of versions that you can use in a hybrid mode. Good. I think we, we have almost everything. We, we have a nice, Lucia from Africa is writing us and say, that, nice. uh, yeah. Lucia, I hope you, you heard the whole presentation with a lot of Cuchesa <laughs> mention, and uh, I would advise you come to Brussels. Then um, somebody asked, how new is the VOPA field? Has it just been created or not? I think you mentioned this with the yeah. music right. painting, but, and uh, somebody asked about money. How, how much is online course? I think you have that on the website, probably. Yeah. Uh, do you think that vocal painting may be used for non-loop based music? Of course, uh, I think, right? Yeah, right, yeah. Sonia, are you there? But I can, before Sonia, I can just say that yes, vocal painting, vocal painting has been on the official uh, curriculum for eight years. It yeah. was like developed for 10 years, but for the last eight years, it has been a natural part of it. And then the app was the, um, published two years ago. And so every student will now also be trained in vocal painting because it, it will it will uh, make the intelligent choir happen in choirs because you can just sign immediately what you want. Like instant coffee, you can make instant music because the singers actually now are, are directly involved. Yeah, you mentioned that you have 30 to 50 uh, students in your class. Somebody is asking for the online course. There is only 12 places. There is a selection. How does it happen? Yeah. So I think there is room for almost everybody, right? You make groups, if I remember well. Yeah, for, for show up uh, courses uh, after COVID-19, of course, uh, there would normally be an audition in terms of what kind of course you want to participate. But for, for the online course for conductors, um, I don't, I mean, right now it seems like people are signing up. So uh, if we have more than 12, we will uh, look into what's the reason. And you also have to fill in a form. What's your inspiration? to do it. What kind of experience do you have to also have a group that match each other's level? Maybe we can organize to have two groups, but it's, it's, it depends. Yes, and, I, and I mention again, because I see some people from Belgium and, and yeah. Switzerland as well, and France, that we, we do this uh, series of two workshops with yourself and Jasper Hall together. And that in between, probably we'll have a group as well online in between the two sessions. Uh, contact us if you want to know more. Sonia, I think we have finished the hour that we planned, or we said maybe more, I don't know. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, well, be, uh, sorry, Sonia, but send me email or find me, and I mean, and find me also on, uh, on Facebook. I post a lot of, I use my Facebook profile mostly for when there's a new course and stuff. And also I'm a vocal center has a Facebook page. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you so much, um, Jean-Claude and Jim, especially Jim, for this fascinating um, webinar. And um, I would have loved to actually see the videos of the people standing at home and doing the exercises together with you. Um, now, I just would like to um, say a few things at the end for those who um, are watching us and maybe don't know us so well. So. Um, here are all the possibilities to stay in touch with you. Somebody had also asked about our Facebook page, so I think it's good that we are also mentioning it here. And if you are not receiving our newsletter yet, I think now is the time to subscribe to it. And especially in COVID-19 times when things can change quite fast, it's good to be um, informed every month about what's going on. And we will continue offering webinars irregularly, and this is the next one. It's part of our EPIC project, and uh, Giuseppe Villa, who was the conductor of the World Youth Choir um, last in 2019, will do a webinar which is addressed at mostly young singers, but also not so young singers who think they want to audition can join, or teachers, conductors who want to tell their young singers how to audition and help them with tips and tricks. 
So he will talk about how you can best prepare your audition for a choir that is choosing singers. It can be a national or international youth choir, but it can also be a professional choir that is auditioning um, for new singers. So this will be on July 9th, and we will keep you informed on our social media um, about this. And that's all for now. Um, thank you very much to everybody. Also, thank you very much to the roughly 150 people who have been following us um, on Facebook and on Zoom. And I wish you all a nice day and a nice weekend and see you soon. Yeah, there is a question in the conversation. Sorry. What yes. about next summer in Slovenia? Maybe we can answer this shortly. Um, I'm not we sure. Pre we prepare everything like it will take place. And uh, so far, this is where we are. But we have not stopped our effort to have to preparing a fantastic festival for next summer. Actually, I can say that the program for Slovenia, the musical program, is about to be published in, I think, a few weeks' time, um, um, maybe in the coming two weeks. So just watch their website, their Facebook or ours if you want to know more about Slovenia. And actually, if you want to meet Jim, I think he's going to be in Slovenia as well. So if you have never met him in person, Ljubljana would be the place to do so. And I'm actually wearing the yes. T-shirt of Ljubljana today. So... <laughs> Um, to make you all hungry for singing, as we said, for the Page Festival. So I think Thank that's you. it. If you have any more questions, just send us an email. Um, Jean-Claude, something else? No, I think we are done. Thank you very much, Jim, for this presentation. Very professional. And we have the water in the mouth to start doing VOPA and improvising with you, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.